<clears throat> okay guys today's question which is the monocot leaf it, it is from may june 2002 question number 1 so let's begin the question says k1 and k2 are stain transfer sections of leaves from two different species of plant make a large label plan drawing of k1 to show the distribution of tissues in the leaf lamina avoiding the midrib details of individual cells are not required first of all let me clear this confusion that you will only be given slide k1 today k2 slide will not be given to you today right so please be very clear about it okay another thing the slide that you've been given you are not supposed to show the midrib region of the leaf while drawing the large label plan diagram right so you will only draw uh, that part which which should not include the midrib if anyone doesn't know what the midrib is this is the diagram of any basic leaf right this region is your midrib so this means you are told to draw a plan diagram which excludes the midrib region which means this much right okay so let's begin this is how your slide will look like sorry guys this is not such a clear picture but this is how your slide will look like and this is how you are supposed to draw uh the large labeled low power plan diagram right if you make a plan diagram of this slide it should look somewhat like this which you can see on the drawing <clears throat> on the left hand side so let me zoom into this drawing to show you the various layers your drawing should look like this you have the upper epidermis okay and then you can see the lower epidermis besides that you can see the palisade layer over here right and um, below the palisade layer you can see the spongy layer when you zoom into the slide you will be able to see more clearly and then if you compare these two slides you you can also see lots of air large air spaces right in fact this leaf is very different from the leaf that you uh, had received last time because over there in the spongy mesophyll in the spongy mesophyll layer the uh, the air spaces were not that large but today you really have large air spaces so in order to represent those air spaces in the large low plan diagram you are going to draw something like this as you can see right and in between you can see those scattered tiny vascular bundles you are supposed to draw them acha how will you observe the different layers in the vascular bundle of course you have to zoom into your slide and see how the vascular bundle actually looks like right so these are the various layers and this is the labeling okay now i just want to show you how the vascular bundle looks like so let me bring this drawing close to okay just to show you how the vascular bundle looks like the vascular bundle shows a small patch of sclerin on the top then you can see those thin walled cells which are the phloem then you have xylem right and below the xylem again you have some sclerin which may or may not be visible if you can't see sclerin it's okay but if you can see xylem and phloem i think that's more than enough right and hence you can see how this vascular bundle has been shown to you so basically let me just point it out for you this is your sclerin this is another patch of sclerin which may or may not be visible if you can only see the patch above it's well and good no need to worry about that and then you have this patch of phloem and below the phloem you have the patch of xylem this one the one in purple is the 
xylem. And this is how you'll uh, show the various layers of the vascular bundle on the low power plan diagram, right? Today's diagram is very easy. Moving on to the second part, which is make a label high power drawing to show the detailed structure of three adjacent cells from the palisade mesophyll layer. So let me show you how you will draw the palisade mesophyll cells. Of course, to draw the palisade mesophyll cells, you will turn your lens to a power of 40, which will give you a total magnification of 400. And then you will randomly choose any three adjacent palisade mesophyll cells, which are these ones, one, two, three. You'll zoom into them and then you will draw a diagram like this. The difference between this diagram and the diagram on the top is that in high power diagrams, you always make individual cells, right? And uh, you can also make structures like, for example, if you can see nuclei, if you can see vacuoles, you can also draw them. Okay, one. Uh, correction which I need to make over here is that when you are labeling, of course, it is out of question. It's, impo it's impossible that you will be able to see the cell membrane, right? So I think the only thing which, which, which will be visible to you will be the cell wall. Yes, the cytoplasm. And you might be able to see the nucleus. This is also may or may not be. So this means that if you can visualize the cell wall, and the cytoplasm, it is more than enough, right? And always remember, since you're drawing a diagram of a plant cell, so since all plant cells have cell wall, cell wall is represented by a double line, as you can see over here. Cell membrane, you cannot see at all, right? So just ignore this label. Let me show you some more diagrams. Low power photomicrograph of the stem, which is a monocord stem, is showing you the upper epidermis, the lower epidermis, is showing you those large air spaces. And yes, if you zoom into it, you will also see that the lower epidermis has stomata. So in order to show the stomata, you will show them like this, like these empty spaces, which you can see on the lower epidermis, but you can't see on the upper epidermis, right? So uh, be very careful when you're drawing this diagram. Let's move on to, again, a high power uh, photomicrograph of uh, the same leaf. It's showing you the palisade mesophyll cells more clearly. It's showing you the vascular bundle, right? So this will help you in drawing uh, the uh, palisade mesophyll cells and as well as in uh, drawing the various layers that are making up the vascular bundle, right? If you see these layers, right? If you look at the way the xylem, cloem, and the sclerenchyma have been shown over here in this drawing, it's more or less the same as you see on the photomicrograph, right? Again, a low power photomicrograph of the monocot leaf, which is showing you all the different layers in the same way as uh, you had seen in the drawing. Okay, now comes part B of the question. Since I told you that you have not been provided with the slide K2, so just leave this question, okay? You're not supposed to do this bit for today. Let's discuss the mark scheme. Now in the mark scheme, we will only discuss question one, part A, right? And A part one and A part B. As you can see, the low power diagram also carries four marks and the high power diagram also carries four marks. Okay, so let's look at the mark scheme for the low power diagram. It, sh it, it shows you that there are maximum two marks given for drawing and two marks for labels. So your drawing shows you, let's just see, no individual cells should be drawn five single lines, correct orientation, no midrib should be drawn. Spongy layer should be larger than the palisade layer. Palisade layer should be larger than the epidermal layer. So if your drawing is following these rules of proportion, then you can get two on two as far as the drawing is concerned. And besides that, 
Let, let's look at the uh, labels. Any two of these labels, if you if you have written any of these, any two of these labels, you can get two marks. Epidermis, stomata, palisade mesophyll, or spongy mesophyll. Moving on to the high power drawing of three adjacent palisade mesophyll cells. So you will draw three cells only. Irregular packing, you won't draw as if they, uh, you know, as if they are bricks in a wall. So this means that those drawings of palisade mesophyll cells should look realistic. Okay. The height of those cells should be more than the width, which is very obvious. And again, you can see in the labels, it says that any two of these labels will be acceptable, which is the cell wall, the nucleus, and the chloroplast. Cytoplasm is also acceptable. It's not wrong. But actually, it's difficult to visualize cytoplasm. The, more, the easiest labels which you can see on the high power magnification today will be the cell wall and the nucleus. Chloroplast, you may or may not be able to see. If you're able to see the chloroplast, then you can draw them and uh, label them. For example, the chloroplast will or should appear like this. Let me draw this one cell to show you. Let's say if this is a palisade mesophyll cell. Okay, and since it's a plant cell, so I'm drawing double lines. Okay, a plant cell has a cell wall. So cell wall is represented by a double line. And you will find, let's say, nucleus over here. Okay. In fact, just a minute. This is your nucleus. Okay. You won't be shading the nucleus. You may or may not be able to see the chloroplast. If they are there, you can draw one or two, whatever number you see, and then you will label, right? Cell wall, nucleus, if you can see, and chloroplast, right? Okay, so we are done with the slide question. I hope this uh, recording was helpful. Now you can uh, start observing your slide. Thank you.